man, this is so crazy here, just with the tree colors and all that. And this is gonna all go away pretty soon, I believe, anyways. I was actually spending a lot of time trying to get this little spotlight light bulb out of the kitchen light. I think it seems like it's stuck. You can pull harder, but it just feels like you're gonna break it. You don't wanna do that. So I'm thinking you need something, I guess, sticky to hold onto it and twist it and pull it. Unless someone has a great idea on how you can get those things out easily. It's not like the regular light bulbs too, the ones where you just screw in and screw out. This one it seems like you turn it a little and then you have to yank it out. And I guess basically just over the time, you just kind of get stuck into it. This is how fast some of them are changing colors already. You prefer them when they look fully blossomed or when they're not as blossomed yet? getting windy. I'm gonna try to focus on capturing some of the cherry blossoms again because they're gonna be gone pretty soon because of the color. Yeah, it's already losing some of its semi-bright color. All right, let's try this. Holy, it's windy as heck and there's little leaves and stuff flying everywhere. Okay, out of batteries. I tried to get as many cherry blossom shots as possible just before it changes because once it's gone, then that's it. But for the most part, again, everybody shared the space and everything. That's the way it should be. Kind of gives a polar opposite to, I guess, what the mainstream usually shows, right? Like when you do stuff like that, or cameras, people taking pictures, or drones, or whatever, everyone's like, get it away! But for the most part, everyone understands, okay, you want the scenery and all that, in these cases anyways. But speaking of drones, how about this one? Drone Shield is keeping hostile UAVs away from NASCAR events. If you were hoping to get some sweet drone footage of a NASCAR race in progress, you may find your quadcopter grounded, unceremoniously by a mysterious force. Drone Shield is bringing its anti-drone tech to NASCAR events at the Texas Motor Speedway. That's the main company name I've heard usually when we talked about these drone guns or whatever you want to call it. They all look like huge bazookas or something like that. The company makes a handful of products, all aimed at detecting and safely intercepting drones that are flying where they shouldn't. That's a growing problem, of course, and not just at airports or Area 51. A stray of drone at a major sporting event could fall and interrupt the game or strike someone or at once or it may even cause a major accident. It says most recently it introduced a new version of its handheld drone gun which scrambles a UAV signal so it has no choice but to safely put itself down as these devices are generally programmed to do. You can't buy one technically, they're illegal, but the police sure can. So from the description, it sounds like when they target and hit the drone or whatever with this signal jam or whatever you want to call it, it makes the drone go into a return to home mode. That's what it sounds like. Although it's kind of interesting because I know from just reading the stories and stuff, a lot of the accidents often, often happen from the return to home features. It makes me wonder if that's going to result in a drone crash when they do that anyways. I also wonder since they said this is at a NASCAR event, whether or not nowadays in those events they use like a drone to capture footage just for the public to see. And would there be such a thing as a misfire with this? Like they accidentally hit the wrong drone and oops, like they're gonna take that one down instead? Oh, that's weird, they're just like sitting there so calm like a statue. And then this one kind of caught my attention because I know with things like drones, one reason people give anyways why you should get rid of them is just because of the noise, like in general. But this one here says, Nighttime train sounds like bombs dropping in East Vancouver. Strathcona residents are losing sleep over the crashing noises and have filed a complaint with the Canadian Transportation Authority. I would imagine when you buy property around areas like that, it's usually, it costs less because of the noise. But it says here, Brodsky 44 lives with her husband and two young children in a house beside the railway tracks. When she moved in six years ago, she was prepared for the usual noise of the train swooshing past. But when the traffic increased and the overnight shunting began last year, it became a different ball game. So because of this, I guess herself and the residents in general are sending a complaint to get them to stop riding these trains within a certain time or to choose an alternative route. Because they're saying things like the extremely loud crashing, screeching, banging that scares the children. 
and all that and basically they say it's a health issue like having to wake up I guess like in the middle of the night and all that so like here it says they are asking CN to stop shunting trains and making loud noises between 8 p.m. and 7 30 a.m. Ultimately, they want the company to send its nighttime trains on an alternative route. She is also concerned about the trains that come through during the day, which can hold up buses and traffic at crossings. Interesting quotes here too, I guess to show their frustration. It says, Goods movement is important, she said, but that does not give you a God-given right to wreak havoc on a community, disrupt bus routes, schedules all over the city. Does one corporation get to do that? And a response, I guess it says from the transportation lawyer and president of the Canadian Transport Lawyers, it says, Trains do make noise, they do make vibrations, but it has to be reasonable. It says the CTA will first assess whether the noise is abnormally loud and causing a substantial interference with the daily life of people. If the authority decides the interference is big enough, it will then ask whether the noise is necessary. Railways do have obligations as per the law to provide service, he said. We force them to operate so that Canadian public can have access to a strong railway network. But on the other end, we say you need to do it in a reasonable way to not cause trouble to Canadians. So with this example, it just makes me wonder if we're going to have things like drone deliveries in the air, whether or not people are going to complain about those, quote, buzzing noise. Although in my opinion, it's not that bad when you're all the way, you can't really hear it. Funny enough, even with there, when I was doing the filming of the cherry blossom, like the photographers, they didn't even know it was there afterwards. It's just that when they came up to me, like looked up in the air like, oh, a drone. They didn't even like realize it was there. But usually that's one of the, again, the arguing points for people to get rid of the drones because of the, quote, noise. But if you think about it in an everyday life, there are so many other things that we tolerate that are way louder. Not too long again until all those cherry blossoms are gone. Well, at least I got a lot of good shots today. Just needed more battery. Alright, see you guys later.